Hello, welcome to a new tutorial presented by the SHL TV. In this tutorial, we are going to see the vasculature of the upper limb. So to start with, we are going to see the arterial supply to the upper limb. So, so with the arterial supply of the upper limb, we realize that it is the subclavian artery which is used in the supply of the whole upper limb so you can visualize here the subclavian artery so here the subclavian artery is a, this is subclavian artery and this portion here is going to be called subclavian artery now after later on when it passes through the axilla here is going to be called the axillary artery and later on as it descends below the axilla is going to be called the brachial artery and later on, as it descends below the bracket archery, at this level of the medial cubital fossa, the medial cubital fossa is going to divide into two parts. You are going to have this part here, which is going to be the ulnar archery, and this part here is going to be the radial archery. This part here is going to be the radial archery. Now, and they are going to end on the ulnar side of the medial side and lateral side of the hand. Now, <coughs> Upon addition of the arterial supply, we have further arteries which are involved. So let's visualize. We need to know that at this portion here, we have this chunk, which is which is going to from the from the um, subclavian artery. We have the tyrocervical chunk which form itself. So we have the vertebral arch which form itself, and we have the internal thoracic artery with the costal costal uh, the, the costal cervical trunk. These are the different trunks which are formed at the level of the subclavian artery, and they're not going to be involved in the upper limb, except some the which are the costal cervical trunk can give the dorsal scapular artery, which can be involved with the upper limb. Now in the, this is the proximal third, this is the proximal part of the, the subclavian artery. The middle part of the subclavian artery is going to give this artery. This artery is going to be called, this artery is going to be called, this particular one is going to be called superior thoracic artery. So this is the artery which is involved. Now you have again this other artery here. This artery is the, the thoracoacromial artery. On the third part, this is the, the, the second part of the subclavian artery. The third part of the subclavian artery gives the thoracoacromial artery. It also gives this particular artery here, the lateral thoracic artery. So these are the two arteries which are given. The superior thoracic artery is given on the second part of the subclavian artery. The third part of the subclavian artery gives the thoracoacromial artery and the um, the lateral thoracic artery. Now at this level, <coughs> you have the axillary artery. So the axillary artery, at the level of axillary artery, axillary artery gives the, the anterior circumflex and the posterior circumflex artery. So we have the anterior circumflex artery, which is going to turn around anteriorly on the head of the humerus and posteriorly you have posterior circumflex artery. Let's, the, last, the last one here, you are going to have the subscapular Archery. So this is the last archery which is involved in this portion. So now, as it enters the brachial region, we are going to have this archery here. This brachial archery. So the axillary archery is going to enter here, and now below here, we are going to have the brachial archery. Going to as you are going to leave the axillary portion. So now, we are going to have this particular arches here. So these particular arches are going to be this one here. Is going to be a deep brachial artery. So the deep brachial artery goes posterior and it is what is involved with the supply with the tricep and other muscles. So this is a deep brachial artery. So we also have the um, the superficial. This the deep brachial artery is used in the supply of the muscle in the posterior compartment of the arm. Why this one, the superficial, um, this one, the superficial brachial artery or the brachial artery trunk itself is going to be so used in the supply of the anterior compartment of the arm. Now the superficial the brachial artery now divides to give this particular artery. Here. So this artery here is going to be called the superior ulnar collateral artery. So that's the superior ulnar collateral artery. So it's going to help the ulnar artery to do its function. Now as it descends here, the brachial artery now divides into two: the radial artery. So we have the division into two: the radial artery and the ulnar artery. So now we see that the radial artery is going to have a division here, and this division is going to be the radial recurrent artery. So this is a particular division of radial artery called the radial recurrent artery. So now the radial artery and the ulnar artery, both of them descend 
to form this arches here so you have this particular arch here this arch here is going to be the deep palmar arch and this other arch here is going to be the uh, the superficial palmar arch the superficial palmar arch is formed from the ulnar artery while the deep palmar arch is formed from the radial artery this other branch here is going to be called the principal policies artery this principal policy artery is the one which supplies the um, the 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 term here so we have the principal policies artery we supply the term again we can increase the arterial supply so when you increase the arterial supply there is nothing of great um, importance so you have already seen main of arteries which are involved so this one so when we visualize it you see you can see here that there is this only an increase before here we had the, our time trois quoi chromial artery our trois quoi chromial artery is going to divide to give this artery here which is going to be called this particular artery is going to be called the deltoid branch of the, of the trois quoi chromial artery we have this artery here called the acromial branch of trois quoi chromial artery we have this artery here called the pectoral branch of trois quoi chromial artery we have this branch here which is called the um, the clavicular branch so up here we have the dorsal scapular artery so we have the suprascapular artery which comes from this one here which is the um coso cervical the tyro cervical trunk the tyro cervical trunk gives the suprascapular artery why the coso cervical trunk we have the coso cervical trunk here this is the coso cervical trunk and the coso cervical trunk gives the artery posteriorly called the dorsal cervical artery so it gives posteriorly the dorsal scapular artery why this one gives the suprascapular artery <coughs> So now these are the different arteries which are involved. Now below here you see how the anterior and posterior cervical cause different arteries. So these are the main arteries which are involved here. Now the next view we are going to remove all the arteries and now visualize the uh, the venous drainage. The venous drainage you need to consider that there exist two main venous drainage. You have the superficial venous drainage and you have the deep venous drainage of the arm. So starting from the distal portion, you have the superficial, the, 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 the deep venous drainage are going to follow exactly the, the deep arteries. So we are going to have the radial and ulnar and ulnar veins. You are going to have the brachial vein. You are going to have the brachial ulnar veins. You are going to have the brachial vein. And all the brachial veins are going to form the axillary vein, then the subclavian vein. So that is going to be the, the deep separation. Now the superficial separation is much more, it's a little bit different where you are going to say that on the superficial circulation on the medial side you have the um, basilic vein and on the lateral side you have the cephalic vein so let's visualize this vein here is going to be called this particular vein here is the cephalic vein so we have on the lateral side the cephalic vein while we have here on the medial side we have the basilic vein so now on the lateral side here, the cephalic vein, cephalic vein takes the lateral compartment of the arm, of the hand. So this is cephalic vein here. The cephalic vein takes the lateral compartment of the arm. So it goes from here to right up to this point here. So it starts from here right up to this point, the cephalic vein. Now the basilic vein takes also the uh, medial compartment. So this is for the basilic vein. You will take the major compartment of the arm, the major compartment of arm and forearm, and end at this level. At this level, it's going to enter into the into the um, brachial vein. So the basilic vein enters into the brachial vein, while the cephalic vein continues and goes to enter to the subclavian vein. So it's going to enter to the the this vein. Here. Now you have you need to know that the basilic and the cephalic vein, all of them are going to do a a a small anastomosis here. And that anastomosis is via the middle uh, cubital vein. They are going to do an, an, an asymmetry at this portion to with the middle cubital vein. So you see that the basilic vein in at this position here. At this position, is going to all enter into the brachial into the brachial axillary vein. So we see that it's going to enter into brachial axillary vein. So that is with the basilic vein. So the brachial vein, you see that the brachial vein is very small. Most of the venous drainage is via the is via the you see that here the back of his venous is very small most of venous drainage here we see that it, most of it occurs via the superficial circulation so now we have it then we see now we have the next one here 
you see that it's all entering with the, the brachial now to form the axillary vein all of them are going to form the axillary vein now at the upper portion of the axillary vein here you see that now the cephalic vein is going to bind to it now for the cephalic vein to enter deep and bind to the axillary vein it needs to pass deeply in the body so you are going to pass it's going to pass at this position to the delta pectoral groove at this position it passes through the pectoral groove and then at this point where it enters it's going to enter at this point which is slightly below the clavicle and that's called the clavicle pectoral triangle so you can touch it and you feel a small depression at level below the clavicle and above the um, the, 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 the pectoralis muscle so you are going to feel that push at this location here a small depression that's where it enter that's the clavicle pectoral groove and enter is going to bind to give the um, subclavian vein and the subclavian vein is going to enter and bind to each other to give the uh, it's going to bind with the external and internal jugular vein to form the right and the left bacrocephalic vein which are going to bind to each other to form the superior vena cava <coughs> so that is it for the um, venous drainage so we remove the venous drainage and we move to the lymphatic Again, the lymphatics is easy. Just the the, the only thing that you need to note on the, the lymphatics are the are the um the lymph nodes. That's what you have to note with the lymphatics. The main, most important thing to note with the lymphatics are the lymph nodes. Now you see that there are not many lymph nodes on the level at the level of the arm. So these are the small lymph nodes here. This particular is the superficial lymph node of the forearm. So you have the superficial lymph vessel of the forearm. This particular lymph node here. Uh, the, is the ulnar lymph node so there are not too many lymph nodes here this lymph node is a cubital lymph node so these are not there are not too many lymph nodes now the most the lymph nodes which are of major importance are the lymph nodes which are found at the level of the axilla region so these are the lymph nodes of major importance now they are classified in into five main types we have the lymph nodes which are closer to the the the, the, the rib cage. We have the lymph nodes which are closer to the humerus. We have the lymph nodes which are the apex. We have the lymph nodes at the center, and they have the lymph nodes which are closer to the to the scapula. So we have one which is posterior, which are the posterior lymph node or the scapular lymph node. One which is um, medial, which are close to the the pectoral region. They are called the pectoral lymph node. One which is lateral. They are called the humeral lymph node. One which is central called the central lymph node, one which is apical called the apical lymph node. So let's all visualize this. So this particular lymph node here, so these are axillary lymph vessels. So this particular lymph node here are lateral, lateral axillary lymph node, and these are lateral and they are closer to humerus. So the lateral axillary lymph node are also called the humeral lymph node. This particular lymph node here are anterior axillary lymph node. We have the anterior axillary lymph node and the axilla, anterior axillary lymph node are closer to the um, the pectoral muscle. So they are the uh, oh, they are also called the pectoralis lymph node. We have this other one which are the medial axillary lymph node. So we have the medial axillary lymph node closer to the thoracic region, also called the thoracic lymph node. So and this are this to have this medial axillary lymph node also drain the breast. This is why, you, in case of breast breast cancer, these lymph nodes are going to be affected. So they are going to metastasize to this particular lymph node, the the thoracic um, lymph node. We have again this other lymph node here. This lymph node is the infraclavicular or the or the apical lymph node. This uh, the lymph node which are infraclavicular or apical. Now this lymph node here are the central lymph node so we've seen that there is lateral lymph node there's anterior lymph node there's medial lymph node there's medial lymph node which are taken from the breast the central lymph node and this one are the apical lymph nodes so what happens is that everything that comes from the from the forearm enters into the humeral lymph node or the lateral lymph node all of them enter into the humeral lateral lymph node so now we have the posterior lymph node here. Now everything that comes from the scapula and all the muscles here are going to enter into posterior lymph node. Everything that comes from the thorax and even with the breast are going to enter into a thoracic lymph node. Everything that comes from the pectoral region are going to enter into the anterior lymph node. 
and all of them are going to direct themselves into the central lymph node. All of them are going to enter into central lymph node. So it implies that if you have a breast cancer, you visualize that you're going to have metastasis to the central lymph node. So if there is metastasis on the central lymph node, you see that there is going to be metastasis on the different lymph nodes which are formed here with anterior, lateral, posterior, and all that. And when the the, the lymph enters the, the different the and the central lymph node, all of them are going to be directed toward the so the apical lymph node so the sub so all of them are going to be directed to the apical lymph node or the sub clavicular lymph node so we have all these directed there and when they are directed all through the sub clavicular lymph node all of them are going to enter at this point here this particular lymph node here which is the right lymphatic duct so on this side is going to enter into the right lymphatic duct but on this other side they are going to direct themselves and enter instead into the thoracic duct so uh, as it enters into the duct, they are going to bind with the um, the subclavian vein and now enter into the venous circulation. So we are, this is this show the vasculature of the upper limb. So from here we say thanks for your kind attention. Don't forget to like and subscribe for science Jumikers. Thank you.